a platform we are on right now is YouTube. What if I say we can develop something like this by ourselves? Well, yes, from the registration page to the data storage, we can do all by our own by learning few concepts of web development. So, hello everyone, this is Nidhi from Edureka and I welcome you all to this introductory session of full stack web development. Before we get started with the discussion of full stack web development, consider subscribing to our YouTube channel and hitting the bell icon to stay updated on latest tech content from Edureka. Your active participation is crucial for our learning journey. Also visit Edureka website for training and certification courses, the link to which is in the description box below. Alright, moving on. So we all scroll web applications like YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, etc. all day long, right? But how many of us actually wonder how these web applications actually work? So yeah, for those who really wonder about that, your answer is full stack web development. So before we proceed any further, let us quickly go through our agenda. We'll start this video with the overview of full stack web development and why should we choose full stack web development. Then we'll talk about the average salary that a full stack web developer gets. And we'll be wrapping up this video by learning few concepts of web development like front end and the tools used for front end development, back end and what are the tools used for back end development. We'll learn a bit about database and at last we'll be seeing what kind of projects we can develop using front end as well as back end. So now let's get started with the overview of full stack web development. Why should we choose full stack web development? Now here is the interface of a very well known web application that is Flipkart. Now you can see I'm able to navigate through this website very easily. I have login page and I have every functionality which web application should have. I can search anything here and then that thing will appear and then I can buy any kind of stuff and then log out easily. So to develop this kind of web application which should perform all these functionalities, you know, you can log in, you can buy something and then log out. We should know the concepts of full stack web development because this is what it takes to develop a web application. Now talking about the average salary that a full stack web developer gets in India as a beginner. So full stack web developer as a beginner in India gets around 6 lakhs to 12 lakhs per annum. Talking about the USA then he gets $120,000 per annum and per hour he gets $57.69. So now let's move forward and learn about full stack web development. So full stack web development basically has two parts, the front end and the back end and they both combine to form a full stack. So there is an example of a front end. So we can see the interface image of a Flipkart website. We can notice that we have images that are placed in well organized manner. We have the navigation bars, we have logos, we have the product listing and everything. So this all thing which a human eye or anyone can interact to is front end of the website. So that's why front end is also known as the client side development because client is able to see all those things when they are surfing to any kind of web application. So the second one is back end. So the example of back end is here we can see the link of Flipkart which says HTTPS. So what is this HTTPS? This HTTPS is basically server to which the client send any kind of request and then they handle it. Like I have searched flipkart.com. So the flipkart website gets open. So this is HTTP which handles the client request and then opens the website. So yeah, this is done using backend. So this part we cannot see. We are just typing on Google flipkart.com and then flipkart appears. So the logic behind that we cannot see. So that is why backend development is known as server side development. So yeah, a successful web application should have these both components, front end and the back end. Now let us explore what is front end. So the most basic term to describe front end is the page or the screen that we see while using web application. We have already seen example. So it is used to make a website interactive, responsive and easy to use. It is basically the graphical user interface of the website. We have seen where the navigation buttons, images and everything are present. So front end development uses three tools, HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Now let us move forward and learn about HTML. So HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. It is used to create website interface. HTML provides structure to the website. Without HTML, our website will be so chaotic and HTML makes our website very smooth. So we can add text areas, images, paragraphs and list using HTML in our website. So HTML works with tags. So in our web application, if we want to add any kind of paragraph or any kind of heading, we need to use tag for 
every specific purpose. Like for paragraphs, we can use P tag. For headings, you can use H tags and so on. There are head tags, body tags, break tags. We can learn this thoroughly when we'll start with HTML. Now moving forward to CSS. CSS basically stands for cascading style sheets. It is used in the website to style the elements that are already present in the HTML page. So CSS is responsible for how the content is presented in the web application including you know colors what type of background it has what type of layout the website has now css can be done using three techniques the first one is inline css when the element is defined in the html page and then style is applied along with that html only using style attribute then that is called inline css the second one is internal css so internal css is also known as embedded css and it is also done inside the html document itself using the style attribute and the third one is external css so external css is basically done outside the html document we make a separate file in the same folder which should have extension of dot css and then we can target any kind of element that is present in html page and then we can style it in the CSS page and later we can interconnect the HTML and CSS page using link. Now let us see the example why CSS is important. So this is the first web page that I have designed using HTML only. There is no styling applied on this. Now this is how it looks after I have applied the styling. Now you yourself can see how you can change your interface, how you can make your web application very interactive using CSS. So now let us see the another example of CSS. We all have used tablets, mobile phone, computers. Now if we want to open any kind of web application on tablet as well as computer or mobile, we can see that web application is able to fit the whole screen size of computer, tablet and mobile. Now we should notice that every screen is of different size but the web application is able to adjust that screen size. Now this is also the property of CSS which is known as responsiveness. So this is also done using CSS styling. We can use flexbox, grid and media queries to apply these kind of styling. We will discuss this thoroughly in our next video. Now let us learn about the third tool of frontend development. So the third tool is JavaScript. We can see HTML and CSS are touching the feel of the website. Likewise JavaScript is the behavior of website. JavaScript is basically lightweight object oriented programming language. It is flexible to use and to create an interactive web page. So the elements that are mentioned in HTML document, the styling is done in the CSS and then the elements can be manipulated in the JavaScript page. Now JavaScript can also be performed using three techniques that is inline scripting, internal scripting and external scripting. Now let us take a most basic example of how HTML, CSS and JavaScript work and contribute to a web application. So here we can see that I have inspected the Flipkart website to check where HTML, CSS and JavaScript has been used. Now when I am going through the HTML page, we can see a blue screen on Flipkart interface. Now that indicates where these elements has been used and where these elements are present, where that CSS styling has been applied. Now you can see an option of event listeners here. So event listeners are basically the functions of JavaScript. We have used very different kinds of event lister in this page like we can see animation integration we can see mouse click we can see mouse drop focus and everything so these all are the functions of javascript that has been used in this particular page now let us move to the other part of full stack development that is backend so the backend development is a part of website which user cannot see it is a server side development now let us take an example to make it more clearer suppose a user is submitting a form they will have to fill out the form with the required fields and then submit it. So the form filling part which the user can see is the front end part and the form submitting part which user cannot see like where the data went and got stored is the back end part. Now let us take one more example of back end. So this we all have experienced when we sign up for any kind of website we see the option in front of us like login using your email or Facebook or Gmail or any kind of other platform. So this is called Firebase authentication. Now in this authentication you don't need to set a ID password you just need to integrate your one Google platform with the platform you are logging into. Now this is also done using backend tool so th these are the things that we can perform using backend. So let us take one more example of backend development. So again we all have experienced this. I have opened Flipkart. Now I am, I am searching for the product that I want to buy. I have selected this product and I am going to payment process. 
Now I want to do the online payment and then I have selected the online payment method. Now you can see here as I have selected phone pay as a my payment method, this platform has sent me to the other platform that is phone pay to make my payment. Now this is called integration of one website to the other website. Again this is done using backend. So, so these are few examples where we use backend for our development process. So now the backend developer ensures that the website is working correctly, the database and servers are working correctly and they use some kind of code to help the browser communicate with the database and store data, communicate with the server and they all work fine. So now let's move forward and talk about the tools of backend development. So tools of backend development includes programming languages, frameworks, databases and servers. First of all, we'll talk about programming languages. So programming languages are most critical part of backend development. It is responsible for server side processing, database interaction, API development. For server side development, we use different languages like JavaScript, C Sharp, Java, Python, Ruby, PHP, Perl. But I would like to mention that JavaScript is the most widely used language for front end as well as back end development. So the next one is frameworks. So frameworks reduce the time and effort that is required for development process. Rather than writing the code from scratch, we can add framework and modify it according to our requirements. So basically before starting any kind of project, developer will choose language which he is going to work on. Suppose he is choosing JavaScript as his language for backend development, then he can go with the frameworks which are Node.js with Express.js. So suppose the developer is going with Ruby as his developing language, then he will choose the framework that is Ruby on Rails and so on. Now let us move forward and talk about database. So database are basically central location where all the data gets stored and then the data gets retrieved from the database only and data gets updated, deleted, everything else, everything is done in database. So database like MySQL, Microsoft SQL Server, MongoDB, these are some kind of database that we use for the backend development process. So now let us move forward and talk about server. Server basically provide necessary infrastructure to manage the data and handle client requests. It stores the client data for user authentication and authorization. So there are different kinds of server like web server, application server, database server, cache server, message queue server, media server and file server. So we have seen HTTP. So HTTP is a type of web server which handles the client request. So now talking about the project ideas which we can develop after learning frontend. So the first one is portfolio website. Portfolio website is basically where you upload all your qualifications, all the kinds of projects which you have done. The second one is to-do list. To-do list is most basic kind of project that you can develop after learning, you know, front end. The third is weather app, news app and game like tic-tac-toe. So the games like tic-tac-toe, they only require few concepts of JavaScript, like few functions you need to use of JavaScript and all the part is done using HTML and CSS. So I would suggest you first of all start developing games like Sudoku and Tic-Tac-Toe then move to personal portfolio website and then you know develop an interface of some kind of web applications you know the front end part only. Now talking about the kinds of project you can develop using backend. So when you have learned backend you have a wide variety of projects that you can develop. The first one is e-commerce website. So I have mentioned e-commerce website with backend because e-commerce website can also be developed using the front end part only. And the second one is clone of websites like YouTube, Netflix and Instagram. Suppose we are sitting for an interview of Netflix. So what would be a plus point if you would have developed the clone of Netflix and mentioned it in your CV. Now the other projects are blog website and task management website. You can develop any kind of project using front end and back end. Now here are a few examples of the interface that you can develop using front end as well as the back end. So here you can see the interface of the YouTube. You can develop it only by using front end also but where you need to download the videos, where you need to access the search history. So for all those part, for all those functionalities, you need to add the back end part. Same goes with Netflix, the interface you see here that can be easily developed using front end only but where you watch video and you download the video and everything that whole part is done using back end itself. So now in this video today we have covered the overview of full stack development then we went to the tools that are used for front end and back end development. In next video we will dive deeper into setting up the development environment including installing and accessory tools and software. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. 
Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!